Hey what's going on guys, come back again here. In this video we're gonna be masking bishop attacks, which is absolutely essential step uh, in order to generate attack for bishops, uh, generate attacks for bishops, which is the sliding piece, and generating moves uh, and attacks for sliding pieces is probably the most intriguing thing uh, in the bitboards implementation. So we would be using magic bitboards in particular, but uh, in order to be actually possible of doing this, First, we need to implement what is known as the masking slider pieces attacks. And we're starting with our bishop. So uh, let's consider that the bishop stays, say, on a1. And now I'm going to be using black pawns in order to uh, mark those squares that needs to be uh, masked uh, within the function that we're supposed to be writing in this video in particular. So these are the bits that are supposed to be masked. And please know that I'm not masking this H8 uh, because uh, we take care only of these relevant bits that might uh, mm, affect uh, the occupancy map overall. So uh, let's say the attack ray is coming until uh, there there is, uh, so uh, I'm using white pawn to represent uh, an actual piece. Well, let's, let's, let's take some sort of a piece here. So black pawns are not black pawns, they're just attack squares. White bishop is white bishop and white knight is white knight. So this this is one of the possible occupancies, right? And here is uh, here might be another possible occupancy and uh, also might be this like occupancy. So there are really quite a few uh, variations of how the occupancy might look like in this particular case and all of them uh, would be uh, really important for us but uh, if uh, if the piece uh, uh, stands stays like right over in here we'll, we'll be able to keep track of capturing that piece just like we do with the leaper pieces so uh, using the the very um, the very last target square where the piece is, is about to come so anyway, uh, I didn't invent this on my own, obviously, and that's the exact way how chess programming Wikipedia uh, allows, uh, not allows, offers doing this, and that's how uh, all, all the implementations basically going for, at least regarding the magic bit boards. So uh, just just to give you the final idea of uh, how the bishop mask is gonna be look uh, is gonna look like, well, let's consider we have a bishop on d4 then the mask would like would look like sorry would look like this so bishop on d4 so it goes diagonally but doesn't go to the very last uh, to the very last file rank so uh, one square from the board edges should be empty so th this is the exact requisite that we actually need to follow in order to later on being able to implement our magic bit boards well, okay, so uh, I would now close my arena and go to the source file. So even though I'm I'm still continuing the source file, uh, already having uh, pre-calculated attack tables being initialized for leaper pieces. Don't get confused by that by that because this tutorial is still absolutely standalone, just just like all the previous ones. So I will quickly walk through some essential parts within the code, uh, and then we'll start imp implementing our Mask bishop attacks function here. So we we have defined the u64 unsigned as a, as an unsigned unknown data type. We have the most essential bit manipulation macros to get set and pop bits. We have our board square mappings here, enumerating the site to use white and black keywords to define the given site to move. We have a basic routine to print the bit board. Uh, in a binary format in a, uh, uh, as an A to A table where zeros represent empty bits and ones represent actually set bits. Uh, so here we had some uh, constants uh, needed to capture the outboard captures for, for, for early per pieces, but as far as this is not the topic of this tutorial, I'm not going to be uh, talking about this actually. And also we have the pre-calculated attack tables for pawns, knights, and kings and the, the corresponding function that we're actually able to initialize those arrays and and finally we have a function in it leaper attacks that was actually initializing uh, those uh, attack tables above I mean this three 
But in this video, we're not going to be initializing any attack tables uh, like we did before. Instead, we just need to uh, create a bare function, uh, like just like mask can attacks, but it, it would be called like mask bishop attacks. And the next video, we'll, 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 we're going to be doing the same, but for mask and rook attacks. So here we want to mask bishop attacks, and this would be the u64. Uh, a function called mask bishop attacks in plural, right? Bishop attacks and it would be taken integer square as its argument as always. So uh, the only thing we need, we'll need only to initialize our attacks from here. Uh, so the big board that uh, would be returned eventually so uh, let's make it here so return attack map for the bishop on a given square and all the and the rest of would be quite a bit different uh so mm, first uh so uh in order to optimize code for size uh i would be following the tord Rumstead's implementation for those of you who don't know who tord Rumstead is it's uh, one of the creators of stockfish chess engine and uh, if you can ever find his code somewhere in just program in wiki or whatever or wherever it's always kind of the, the best source uh, to follow at least from my understanding well, well at least if you can <laughs> make something better so I would be using his implementation in particular and he prefers to uh, initialize the variable before the for loop and th this makes sense uh, to make the code more effect more effective from from the code size perspective so we need to in initialize files and ranks and here we just say uh, integer f and r would stay it would stand for files and ranks and also we need to initialize uh, well I'm calling them target files and target ranks uh, while in towards implementation it's not really um, that clear basically but I, ju I just want to show you the concept and how it works and then actually it, it's kind of you to judge uh, uh, how to call this in a better way so let's create uh, the variable called uh, target file and uh, sorry target rank first and it, it would be equal to square divided by 8 and also integer target file which would be equal square uh, uh, divided by modular of 8 okay and before anything else uh, I would probably like to run my bishop mask attacks here so or mask bishop attacks and let's give a square doesn't matter for now let's, let's give it a d4 mm, also no it's not gonna be here okay let's give it a square of d4 let's actually try to compile and run the source first so i need to say gcc bitboard uh, dot c minus o to create the binary executable called bitboard and compile so I want to run this bitboard binary executable so let's have a look okay please in declaration mask bishop attacks so just a typo here okay perfect so um, now right over in here I just want to print out one little thing here so uh, let's first bring the square and decimal specific uh, decimal format in here then let's uh, bring this tr and which I which I consider to call like target rank so like this and target file as well and decimal specifier mm, okay and also target square and decimal specifier so uh, if we just take uh, let's say let's say we take 
our target uh, target rank plus one to shift on one square ahead. Uh, I mean, no, like uh, let's 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 actually have the square first, and then target square, target foe, and to calculate the target square, we need to say target rank plus one, and this is the rank yeah and just 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 use the formula that we usually make use of to calculate the square we have in a follow rank so rank multiplied by eight plus fall but as far as we're supposed to be uh, calculating the square for for assuming the offset we're using this target rank plus one and plus target fall plus one actually and just parenthesis to ensure the order of math operations and let's have a look what we'll have basically in return. So yeah, let's have a new line here. So we have uh, the target square 35 and uh, uh, the initial square 35 and the target square 44. And, and probably the very last then to consider would it be to print the offset actually. And just just to give an offset here as well. So it would be, uh, so which one is bigger, is greater. So this one, copy, and minus square, just to give you a visual idea of how it works. Uh, too many arguments, excuse me. Oh, I just didn't specify the, off the decimal specifier here. So we have this, eventually we have the square with the offset of nine, which is the valid offset for bishops because just like pawns bishops goes with offsets of nine and seven and the uh, one direction and the opposite direction uh assuming the where, where exactly we shift our bits basically but uh here we're not even uh doing this like we've done uh within this leaper pieces so we're just uh calculating the uh we're just uh calculating this offset square uh, this this target square and just just to just to check that out that the target square is correct we just printed this offset and then we just then would we then we would be simply bitwise or in the tar, uh, the target square uh, uh, the bit uh, set on the target square with our attack table when we would be returning this back so j just just to give you a little idea like why I personally consider these variables to Call, uh, to, to call this variable like target uh, files and ranks maybe not the most accurate uh, uh, commentary but still I, I just wanted to give you an idea of why do I suppose to call this variables the, this this sort of way okay and now we need to actually generate our attacks now just let's let's enjoy the beauty of towards uh, implementation here so uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, there is uh, we so, so what I've been using so far on this channel uh, regarding for loops, like we've been uh, creating the integer, uh, creating the we've been creating um, oh my god a variable within the for loop, and then just did 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 something with this variable. I mean, uh, just some, some conditions here. And then uh, doing something with variable like increment, but we also can uh, put a commas here and work with with some sort of another uh, of another variables. And we also have might have a multiple conditions if we have if we put a comma here and also uh, multiple actions with a specific variable. So this this is a little bit confusing for those of you who have never seen this before. But uh, hopefully, uh, I really hope that you are, you you will understand like what's kind of going on here. So, uh, oh my god, let me, uh, so, uh, we already have our ranks and, uh, and file, uh, integers being initialized. So, just what we've done here, uh, before in order to print the offset, so I'm saying rook, uh, sorry, rank equals to target rank plus one, okay, and also file equals, uh, target file plus one so we're going the uh we're plausing uh so <laughs> it's got a pl plausible direction if you can say so 
Uh, now we're important part, the condition. So to make sure that we're not hitting the board edge, but uh, we st but we st but to make sure that we stop exactly where uh, one square before the board edge occurs, we need to make sure that rank is less than e less equals than six. Because it would be, if rank would be equals to seven, this is actually the board edge. So the six is one square before the board edge. And also we need to make sure that the foul is less uh, uh, equals than six as well. Then uh, depending on the direction of where we're supposed to be, uh, 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 <laughs> oh my god. Uh, depending on the offset direction, we would be doing. The, uh, we would be changing this. Uh, so in the opposite direction, we would need to say like uh, greater equals than one to make sure that it doesn't uh, uh, that the attack is not about to be is not about to cure on the board edge again. But assuming the negative direction, it's uh, <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, I think that it just. I'm ex my explanation are my explanations are too unclear. So let me just show you this visually better, and then we will walk through. And finally, we need to increment our rank and foul like this. And now, in order to actually put these attacks on the attacks big board that we're supposed to be returning from this bishop mask function, we simply need to say attacks bitwise or with. Uh, and here and I need to say so I'm using one sign so uh, uh, I could have actually um, well I could have used the macro but yeah, I, would, I would rather go just hold on a sec I just want to have a look at my sad bit macro uh, yeah I could have used this sad bit macro uh, okay, I, I, I'll, I'll now first just just make it uh, uh, by hands, and then I'll use the macro to, to give you an idea like uh, what it makes. So we want to right shift this, and now we need to calculate the square based on the target and rank offsets that we've just generated. So assuming the eight to eight board representation, the uh, formula to calculate the square is, is always like we've been using rank multiplied by eight plus five. And we've been using this really numerous times. Well, let's say, let's say we've been using this within our print board function. So this is it, this is, and oh, this is the print board. Uh, uh, so do, don't we have a print board here? Oh, probably with the wall. Doesn't matter really. So, uh, yeah, probably I just dropped that print board from this uh, from this branch of tutorials. Uh, no, uh, anyway, this uh, this expression means uh, that we're trying to convert the rank and the fall uh, into into an actual square, and then we're making this, and, and there then we shift in the constant of one and sine long long. Uh, to the left, uh, the number of bits of uh, what's the result of this ex uh, uh, to the value result in this expression that, that this expression returns in result, and we're setting a bit on a text table. So bitwise or in a text is, is the same like a text equals a text bitwise or and then bitwise or this with this expression. Oh my god, okay, so let me just. Uh, uh, now I want to print the bit board because this mask bishop attacks actually returns a bit board because this attacks uh, variable we're returning is actually u64 which is unsigned long long so I just want to have a look uh, okay uh, oh my god I did, I did something horribly wrong because we we're hitting the board edge here oh what have I done um, what have I done not like this uh, we need to say and because we need to care about both uh, uh, file and rank uh, board edges at the same time. Sorry, so here we have this and instead of comma. I'm really sorry. So now this should be just fine. Okay, so we have the bishop on d4, and this is one of the possible directions where our uh, where our uh, uh, bishop mask uh, mask bishop attacks are coming. So. Uh, 
And as far as you can see, this variable, uh, th this, this expression, so it's literally the same like we're doing within our set bit. So just uh, bitwise or in the current given bit board with, uh, uh, with, with a given index. But, but, well, but probably as far as we don't really have the bit board, uh, but we're just having this, uh, we're we actually not setting anything, but uh, so we have just only this part. So no, no need to use the set bit actually. Because I could have saved the uh, one and signed one loan to a temporary bit board and then just uh, use the set bit macro but but no 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 reason for doing this at all so i will leave this just as is well okay guys so now the only thing left here for us is actually to uh cover uh, other directions so now let's switch the direction for target file and this means that file from now on should be greater or equals than one okay and also we need to decrement the file instead of incrementing this let's have a look at the output okay so we have this ray okay perfect and now let's do the same but uh, reverse the direction of our rank so now rank would be greater equals the one and decrement the rank now we have another ray occurring here so this is quite pretty cool, right? That's not my invention. That's Stern Drums, that the author of Stockfish. That that's how, how elegant, how elegantly he did create this sort of a mask and stuff here. And eventually, we need to do uh, for both file and ranks to the opposite direction, and it both would be more uh, uh, greater equals than one, greater equals then one and both decremented here okay so now we have our bishop on d4 and all the appropriate uh, squares uh, are masked here just just uh, just according to the requisites shown uh, 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 just uh, according to the requisites from just programming Wikipedia regarding the magic magic bit boards implementation so this is the first and the most essential part which is called to mask bits and whatever bit board uh, uh, is resulted for a bishop on every single given square whatever of this bit boards would be serving as a key that we would we would have been multiplying by the magic number later on in order to obtain the index in the bishop text table but let's just drop it for now because that's a little bit too confusing if you've never uh, if you never deal with this before so uh, instead I just want to test this bishop mask uh, bishop uh, uh, mask bishop attacks and I just want to run this well actually I can go this way and just paste so now I want to be printing this uh, bishop uh, uh, bishop mask uh, mask attacks for, for bishops uh, assuming the bishop is standing on every possible square on the chessboard from starting from a1 and ending up with a8 okay so uh let me just clear the console to be able to scroll up uh after and let me just make sure that i'm not printing anything within the mask bishop attacks itself okay okay let's have a look uh what Okay, not d4, but square. Let's save. Okay, one more time. Okay, so probably bishop on h1. Okay, bishop on g1. Okay, okay bishop on f1. We already have up to two rays here. Bishop on e1. This is it. Bishop on d1. Okay, c1, b1. Okay. So now here because just the border edge here. Okay, a1, perfect. And then we go in uh, h2. So all uh, still only two rays because uh, or hold on a sec. Yeah, still h2. Yeah, still two rays here. 
and starting from h3 already you see like it starts getting the th the uh, four rays already yeah so here you're getting the four rays okay and now yeah in the center of the board it's already gets more and more clear like how the bishop uh, how the masked bishop uh, how the square is masked as the bishop attacks or preserved for the bishop at bishop attacks actually looks like okay so yeah, it seems like it's working just pretty fine and let's just let me just have a look at the very initial part so a8 square okay go in there okay 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 yeah so it seems like it seems like it's working quite pretty nicely well, okay guys so this is it from my side and the next video we're gonna be doing literally the same stuff but for the rooks uh it's it's really similar uh, just compare uh, if we compare the uh, compare it to what we've been doing with bishops uh, so masking, masking rook attacks is, is really similar stuff here so uh I really appreciate it if you're following this tutorial and trying this at home because this is absolutely fantastic ex experience to have as a developer trying to understand all this stuff uh yeah so this is it from my side thanks for watching i uh, hope to see you next in the next videos so until the next time and take care